the people of the city of Flint under the constitution and laws of the state of Michigan in order to secure the benefits of local self-government and to provide for an honest, transparent, and accountable government to hereby adopt this charter and confer upon the city the following powers subject to the following restrictions and prescribed by the following procedures and government structure. By this action, we secure the benefits of home rule and affirm the values of equality, freedom, justice, representative democracy, professional management, strong political leadership, citizen participation, environmental justice, and effective government. We have a Declaration of Rights in brief. One, the city of Flint shall have in this charter reaffirm their faith in fundamental human rights and in the equal rights of men and women. Two, the people have a right. Two, and city officials shall pledge themselves to assure residents and businesses a clean, safe, blight-free environment, safe and decent housing, job opportunities, clean air, access to safe drinking water, clean waterways, and a sanitary city, health care, safe roadways, sidewalks, and convenient public transportation recreational activities and facilities, and cultural enrichment. Three, the city has an affirmative duty to secure the equal protection of the law for each person and to ensure equality of opportunity for all persons. Four, a person shall have reasonable access to all files and records of the city which relate to his or her rights and duties. Five, the people shall have the right to know the rules and regulations governing dealings between the city and the public and shall have access to review procedures on administrative decisions. Six, the city shall endeavor to secure application of the principle one person, one vote for any regional policy making body which taxes or provides any service to city residents or takes any action affecting the city's interests. Seven, only such limitations as are determined by law solely for the purpose of securing due recognition and respect for the rights and freedoms of others and of meeting the just requirements of morality, public order, and the general welfare of the city shall limit the exercise of individual rights and freedoms. Eight, the rights and freedoms set forth in this declaration may in no case be exercised contrary to the purposes and principles of this charter. Nine, the enumeration in this charter of certain rights shall not be construed to deny or disparage others retained by the people. And lastly, number 10, the city may enforce this declaration of rights and other rights retained by the people. In brief, in brief we will now give a brief of what we did in various articles. Article number one, entitled General strong ethics. We found that the current charter lacked a strong set of enforceable and relevant ethics standards. We believe that this has made it easier for some public servants to act in an unethical manner. In addition, the Standards of Conduct Board from the current charter was effectively dissolved and prior to dissolution made weak and ineffective. Therefore, we incorporated explicit ethical standards into the charter that do not allow for illegal activity, use of city resources for personal benefit, 
participation in activities and actions on matters where officials have a conflict of interest and accepting of gifts or bribes. This new charter includes disclosure requirements for public servants and contractors where conflicts of interest exist. The ethics provisions that we incorporate into the charter are strengthened by requiring the Ethics and Accountability Board and our ombudsperson to enforce the ethics provisions. From our numerous engagement with residents and current or former city employees, we found significant concern that over the years, there were appointees to positions that did not have the qualifications, experience, or ability to do the jobs they were appointed to. The most recent water crisis was just one example of people without the proper knowledge making decisions that affect city residents. The new charter would require that prior to any appointments being made, qualifications would need to be set forth in ordinance and appointees would be required to demonstrate that they have those qualifications. Setting forth qualifications in ordinance means that the council and mayor would both have the opportunity to weigh in on the qualifications and that the qualifications that there would be a measure of consistency over time and that the public would have an opportunity to also weigh in on any changes to the required qualifications of officials. improved charter enforcement. Our interviews with former officials and engagement with residents has brought to light numerous instances where the current city charter was just ignored with little or no recourse for city residents. It is our belief that this has allowed for numerous abuses on the part of various administrations. We have created a formal process via which citizens can seek remedy through the courts for charter violations. It also allows that a charter violation may be an accident and allows for the violator to correct the mistake before any penalties apply. We also provide specifically for the ombudsperson to be a watchdog and enforce the charter. We believe that better charter enforcement will help solve many issues the city has faced. Secure, has faced. Secure pensions. The commission has found that prior to moving pension obligations to the state of Michigan Municipal Employee Retirement System, the city had underfunded pensions and that the city pension system is currently less than 50%. In both the first and seventh article, we have put forward requirements to ensure that the city meets its pension obligation. The commission found that charter required public notice procedures were out of date and were built for a time when the city had a newspaper with daily circulation. The new charter would require that the city meet the legal requirements of the state of Michigan for public notices that notices be published on the city's website. And in addition, that anyone who wishes to receive public notices may sign up to receive them. As City of Flint residents, the city commission members are aware that home and auto insurance rates in the city are excessive in comparison to other localities. Additionally, it is extremely difficult for residents who wish to maintain and improve their homes to find financing to do so, even with good credit due to the current situation of the city. These led to higher rates of under and uninsured cars and homes, as well as a cycle of deterioration of housing conditions. The commission has inserted language into the charter that would enable the city to first study and then pursue a system to provide car and property insurance 
and home improvement loans to residents. This could be done through working with a nonprofit agency, through city government, or in cooperation with another entity that pursues a similar program, such as the city of Detroit, which amended its charter to allow for such a program in a similar fashion in 2011. Improved election cycle. Elections for city offices occur in odd numbered years on opposing cycles and typically suffer from lower vo voter turnout. This structure has created a situation in which council members may run against the mayor without giving up their council position. Indeed, in many mayor selections, there are multiple council members running against the incumbent mayor. The dynamic incentives, the council members and mayor to not cooperate with each other. A council member can find political advantage in spending the first two years of their term attempting to embarrass or ensure the mayor fails instead of working together to ensure the success of the city. This charter would require that the city transition to an election schedule in which city offices would be elected during gubernatorial years. This would improve voter turnout in the city for both elections to city offices and for elections to statewide offices such as governor. The election cycles of mayor and council would be aligned so that potential candidates would need to decide if they want to run for council or if they want to run for mayor. We believe that by addressing these problems and implementing the solutions that we have developed, we will increase government accountability, government effectiveness, and public involvement. Candidate. Recent events have shown that the community does not always have sufficient press resources reporting on municipal matters for the public to be fully informed of the background of candidates for elective office. The following requirements in this new charter would require candidates to swear that they are residents of the city, disclose any business interest that they have with the city, and disclose any failure to pay taxes to the city. We believe that by addressing these problems and implementing the solutions that we have developed, we will increase government transparency. There is currently no formal way for the citizens of a neighborhood to petition for public infrastructure improvements, such as sidewalks, streets, water infrastructure, abandoned housing demolition, or business district development. Many residents have expressed frustration with their ability to have the city address these issues of decaying infrastructure and blight within their neighborhoods. We believe that addressing these problems and implementing the solutions that we have developed, we will increase government accountability and public involvement. The current charter does not have a method of handling a temporary absence of a council person or mayor due to an issue of illness or emergency. The new charter would allow for temporary absence of up to 45 days in elective office. For example, if an elected officer was in a car accident or otherwise unable to attend to their duties prior to any declaration of vacancy. In the event of a short-term vacancy in the office of mayor, the city council president will become acting mayor. We believe that by addressing these problems and implementing the solutions that we have developed, we will increase government effectiveness and government accountability. Thank you. The current charter has an abutment office that is appointed by council. There is no current abusements in the city of Flint and has not been one for a number of years for various reasons. 
including decisions under the emergency manager. The commissioners feel that the lack of an ombudsman potentially contributed to the lack of an identification of water problems. Additionally, the commissioners found a lack of enforcement of numerous charter provisions and ethics standards within city government. The board will consist of one member appointed by each council member from their ward and two members appointed by the mayor. The board will appoint the ombudsman who will investigate complaints, enforce the charter, conduct performance audits of city operations, and enforce ethics and root out misconduct. The board will all issue the reports of the ombudsman and insulate the above person from political pressure that may exist in investigating complaints and enforcing the charter. The Human Relations Commission will exist under the Ethics and Accountability Board and will work in concert with the above person to reduce discrimination, assist the public, and foster good relations in the community outside of city operations. We have established a minimum funding level for the ombudsman from the already existing general property tax levy. We have found that there is some confusion as to the nature of the council's role in the city government. The charter has currently spread roles and duties through the charter and it can be difficult for the average citizens to know the responsibilities of council. The commissioners have inserted language at the beginning of the article of the legislative branch that explains the basic duties of council members. This makes it easier for the council members, citizens, and potential future council members to understand the role of the office. Residents have expressed concerns in the community meeting about behavior of council members. Concerns include the council's ability to treat members of the public and each other with respect and council's knowledge of governmental practice. The new charter sets behavior expectations of council members, requires city council to write rules of procedures, and provides for the ability of council to enforce its own rules. The city council is the legislative body of the city and is responsible for passing the laws that governs the city. However, the council does not currently have the ability to monitor the implementations of laws on the part of the executive other than to subpoena appointees and employees, which could easily be perceived as combative and increased tension between the branches of government. The commissioners have created language that allows for city council to receive reports from department heads on a quarterly basis and to ask questions of department heads at that time. The clerk appointed by the council and serving at its will chairs the election commissions, which both conducts elections and manage the reapportionments of wards at the decennial census. This gives the council significant influence over both of these functions. We have created a term of five years for the office of clerk with the ability for a clerk to be reappointed when each term expires. This allows for some level of independence in the office of clerk, particularly when conducting the reappointment of council wards after each census, it retains the council's ability to appoint the clerk and does not put a limit on the number of terms in the office. Continuing the authority of a strong mayor, we have received strong indication from the community that they prefer the ability of the city to elect the chief executive of the city. No changes were made to the responsibilities and authority of the mayor. The new charter gives the mayor the authority to organize the administration to meet the government services needs of the city. To encourage accountability and transparency, the new charter calls for the administration to provide more public reporting and greater cooperation with city council. 
restructuring executive departments. The current charter allows for up to 10 executive departments and mayoral appointees to head them that may be created and reorganized to address enumerated functions. The city currently has six executive departments to address those functions. The new charter specifies the Department of Law, Human Resources, and Finance, gives authority to the mayor to create another five departments for a total of eight departments and to appoint each of the directors. In addition, the mayor can appoint up to five additional executive staff, including the city administrator. All the department heads and executive staff positions must have a job description that includes skills, experience, training that is approved by city council as an ordinance. A problem brought to the attention by numerous parties is the politicization of the city attorney's role. The city attorney is appointed by the mayor and serves at the will of the mayor. In the past, many city attorneys have acted as the mayor's attorney, acting at the direction of the mayor as opposed to the interest as the city as a whole. Inexperience and, lack, and a lack of an in, independence have led to costly mistakes such as the Genesee Towers inverse condemnation that cost the city $6 million and resulted in a special assessment on the tax rolls of every property owner. The new charter establishes the chief legal officer to be the city attorney for the municipal co cooperation of the city of Flint to be clear that the attorney represents all parts of the city government and the interests of the whole city. The city attorney is still nominated by the mayor and approved by city council. The mayor or city council can call for the removal of the city attorney, but will need the approval of the other. Across the country, the collective bargaining rights of public employees have been under assault and have been removed in some instances. This is of particular concern of, to the commission. The charter explicitly enshrines the rights of employees of the city of Flint to organize and collectively bargain. Maintaining the commission and enforcing the merit principle. The Commission is aware that classified employees over a number of decades have had concerns of retribution and failure to advance their careers if they do not take actions that are in violation of the Charter or are otherwise dubious or unethical. Such a fear makes it difficult to ensure that the Charter is enforced. The new Charter maintains the Civil Service Commission and adds language clarifying their duty to ensure that merit and not political pressures, pressures governing hiring and promotion. We find that maintaining city ownership while ensuring non-interference in the hospital's operations to be the best for the proper functioning of the hospital. Hurley Medical Center employees have been represented by their unions exclusively for a number of years. The charter would leave the representation of Hurley Medical Center employees to their employee unions. The proposed charter maintains the same appointment process as the previous charter had. The appointment procedure and structure of boards, commissions, and committees as described in the current charter with the mayor making appointments with the approval of city council functions effectively and efficiently. The charter commission is not proposing any changes to that section. However, we are increasing public accountability and transparency. The City of Flint has numerous boards and commissions that undertake a wide variety of tasks. It is difficult for both City Council members and citizens to stay appraised and engaged with what is occurring with these bodies. The new charter requires timely filing of minutes that can be inspected by the public as well as regular public reporting to City Council. This charter also proposes to continue effective management of Hurley Medical Center with no changes to the way that particular element works. The Charter Commission finds that Hurley Medical Center is a valuable asset for our community, vital to the health and safety of our residents, and it should be maintained as the leading medical facility under the ownership of the city. Its independence from political pressures of the city of Flint allowed it to identify the lead crisis during emergency management. We have not proposed any changes to the management of Hurley Medical Center.
This section includes additional language eliminating the ability to raid water fonts. The Charter Commission found that it was a common city practice through multiple administrations and under emergency management for sewer and water funds to be transferred from the general fund for general government purposes. This has been done through direct transfers and borrowing and that is never paid back. The result is higher water and sewer rates for customers. Language has been added to the Charter explicitly barring the transfer, encumbering, or borrowing of funds that are designed for specific public purposes, including enterprise funds such as sewer and water. The new draft Charter proposes a more structured and open budgeting process. The Charter Commission found that the budget process tends to begin very late in the fiscal year. It suffers from the lack of early communication between the executive and legislative branches, and citizens often have no opportunity to provide feedback until the very end of the process. This reduces community involvement and creates unneeded tension between mayor and city council. The new charter will require city council and the mayor to begin to work on the budget early with input from the public and create continuous budget creation and monitoring schedule. It requires the mayor and city council to agree on goals and objectives and develop a preliminary budget before the introduction of a formal budget by the mayor. This is intended to create a positive working relationship between the city council and mayor in the budgeting process. The public has an opportunity to participate throughout the process. It has been an unfortunate regular occurrence that enacted budgets are not followed or that spending runs ahead of pace, leaving not enough money at the end of the fiscal year. This is an issue of inadequate monitoring of the budget and leads to last minute transfers and two common emergencies. The commission has added language that requires the chief financial officer to provide city council and the public with a monthly spend plan and report monthly on the status of the budget and current spending. One method from which budgeting errors have occurred in the city is through overestimation of revenues. This has led to budgets that are balanced on paper but not balanced in reality. Budget with overestimation of revenues means that the actual budgeting decisions are made by unelected officials behind closed doors instead of by the people's elected representatives. A revenue estimating commission is created with members who are experts in municipal finance and includes both administrative representatives and council representatives to estimate current and future revenues of the city. This information is provided to the mayor and city council to inform current year spending and budget development. One proposed change to this draft charter is affordable water and sewer fees. The city of Flint has some of the highest water and sewer rates in the country and has many low income residents who have extreme difficulty in paying those high water rates. The new charter requires council to enact an ordinance creating a payment assistance program for residents within need within two years of the enactment of this charter. Additionally, voter approval before privatization, something that is proposed in this new charter. In our discussion with the community, we have become aware of a general concern that city assets will be privatized without the input of the public. Currently, our charter allows for the city council to privatize city assets, such as water and sewer utilities with a two-thirds vote. The revised charter will require a vote of the public before utility assets are sold. We propose a transparent accounting of water funds. Significant concern has arisen over the matter in which our utilities are managed and the budgeting of water and sewer fees paid by citizens. The current budget and comprehensive annual financial report do not provide significant detail into the disposition of fees paid by citizens. The charter is written to require a more detailed report of publicly owned utilities such as water and sewer This article doesn't contain any charter changes that are relevant to the manner in which government will operate in the long term. The details 
in the transition section uh, inform how the current charter would move to the new proposed charter when adopted. We thank you very much for your support and interest in the charter and hope that you'll take the time to share with us your thoughts, opinions, and concerns.